All right, you're good to go back. 20 cars. 20. 20, 20 cars. You got it. Protecting the, the non-existent... Do you even need a guy to protect a... a, a engine shove yeah technically shove. we're shoving through the tender so you you've got your brakeman riding Over the on the hump, front steps you know, the, the nice oh, i mean this is this is fine this is oh, wait hold on hold on are we we lined yeah we are lined we better okay. be lined i'm sending it man this wait, is the, no we're not lined this uh, is the kenosha figure it out figure it out yeah no this figure is, it out. Oh, that's right we bought figure the class out. 70 we did it a, we did a run you gotta slow down kenosha Fig figure it out figure kenosha. it out kenosha. Ah! kenosha kenosha you're too fast kenosha i'm gonna flick the switch i thought we needed cordwood cars didn't yeah, we? but oh. I just got the switch oh, okay. now. Beautiful. It's fine. I thought you were trying to throw the you first one. I don't know. Man. You're I'm not the brake man. Well, you're going don't. so fast. Well, this this is the speedy All boy. Right. This Hand is the boy is of legends. Go. You got to push this car into the rest apparently. Okay. It's fine. Right. Don't. Good. Get that one. Get that. Dunk. Perfect. Get that. Perfect. Let me just check all the brakes. Oh, I guess you just got to keep shoving back. Yeah, I can just shove through them. Yeah, shove all the way back to the as I check brakes, perfect, perfect. This it's engine going. feels like it's been so long since I played with the Class 70 and Railroads Online, and it's so it's so familiar yet so foreign to me because I mean I've got the the modernized Class 70 346 is the engine we're rebuilding right now at the museum. It's on up for its 15 year rebuild, but the size That's and the proportions one you of for it. Like Twelve hundred dollars or whatever. Right, right. Thinking. Yeah, I wish. They, they bought yeah. it for, I think it was a thousand bucks, maybe it was 1200, somewhere in there. Yeah. Back in the 1950s, uh, the, uh, the lumber company it was working for after it had been sold off the Rio Grande, uh, like burnt down or something. And so they uh, they pretty much sold off everything that was salvageable. And then uh, the other engine from the museum, RGS 20, went and picked it up and towed it to towed it to the Rio Grande for them to tow it to the, the museum back when it was in Alamosa. So, yeah, uh, it's right. pretty good. I extended the lead track, so you should be good for a while. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess I don't need to be going back this far, but it's... No, it's fine. And it's then fine. we go this way, and then... <clears throat> can I... Oh, my God. We don't have a line... Oh, no, we go all the way to the end, and then... Okay, I'm going to go to the end and get the switch, so you can just go full, full Sound, steam ahead. Sounds good. Whenever you... Uh, Sorry, yeah. I, was just, uh, I was just enjoying the scenery over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, the scenery is quite nice over there. It is, yeah. That's a uh, yeah. that's a neat one. It's a it's an interesting it's an interesting thing. Yeah, it's it's funny. Like, there's so much about the engine that's very familiar, and the proportions feel very familiar. But at the same time, with the older look, the shorter smoke box, the diamond stack, and all that, slightly different cab. It's like Wait, you were, not the you same. You were talking. But about railroads online the engines are named after like um what their names were for example the montezuma but not this named, one <laughs> but not the class 70 so the class 70 that was the the manufacturer's designation no was that class, was the oh, rio okay. grand's designation for this the rio grand has a, like i always appreciate their designations because they make a lot of sense the class 70 it means that it's a seventy thousand pound locomotive Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, and later, so it weighs, when it weighs seventy thousand pounds, just just the engine itself, not the tender, but yes. Right. Um, and later, when they modernized and became the Denver and Grand Western, they changed the classification to make even more sense in my mind, where they call it a C nineteen, which was the modernized, more boiler pressure, a little bit more power than is the it class seventy thousand pounds. Is it's that a that consolidation two eight zero that pulls okay. nineteen thousand pounds. Yeah, that makes so sense. So it just, I, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm with you. I followed. It makes sense. It's super easy, whereas a bunch of other railroads didn't make that stuff make any sense whatsoever. Um, so it's a, it's a nice little system. The the actual manufacturer's designation I want to say is the 10-26E, which tells Consol you it's consolidation. Like it's it 10 tells you it has 10 wheels. 26 tells you that the piston. Uh, diameter is 16 because it's divided by two and then you add three i think what yeah it's what? so stupid what? the baldwin makes no sense don't listen to them they're a bunch of drunks uh so 26 this, this divided by two is 13 says, it says the baldwin locomotive works burnham perry williams and co number 4919 1880 philadelphia usa 49 19 i mean that's probably that was probably a, one of the class 70s i don't know but um, I, don't, I don't know. That, that means that was the four thousand nine hundred nineteenth engine they made. Is that what? That yes, is? total. Yeah, like three forty six type though. No, total. 
um, total. 346, like which is uh, one of the Class 70s, but modernized. Her builder's plate, which I have a replica of in the back of all of my uh, my actual face cam stuff. Fun fact. Um, is 5712 in 1881. So they made 800 locomotives between this one and, uh, and 346, which was then 406. But How many locomotives do you think Baldwin made as a company total? Oh, they goodness. Disappeared? Uh, somebody, 10, I'm sure. 10,000? Oh, God, it's more than that. So th- there's... Um, there's, there's a good litmus test. They made a big, powerful, and kind of special locomotive that still exists, I want to say in the 20s or maybe the 30s, that is the Baldwin 60,000, because they had built 60,000 60, steam locomotives in by the 20s or 30s. Um, and it still exists, I believe, at the Franklin Institute. Really big, honking, crazy locomotive that was like a, a special demonstrator of new technology, and none of it worked. Uh, so nobody ever really ran it. So it ended up in the museum. Um, but, but they made more beyond that, I mean, for the next 20, 30 years, although probably a lot less. So, I don't know, probably less than 100,000, but more than 60,000, tell you that much. And that was just Baldwin. Are you, are you full regging it right now? This yep. is all we got? I think, uh, I think the Class 70 is still on the old speed cap, which is uh, wow. which is a bit of a bummer. Cap. So, How fast? Okay, so we have a bunch of engines now. We've got the Class 70, we've got the Montezuma, we've got the Tweet C. Uh, I mean, we've got, theoretically, if you were to look at all the locomotives and railroads online, what's, like, theoretically the fastest based on old school? I mean, my guess would be Eureka, the, the 440. The Eureka is actually probably just the speediest. Yeah, uh, the, the real you Eureka. Gotta down, I gotta hit this switch, right. The real Eureka uh, was clocked at doing 45 miles an hour. Um, right. Once in the modern day, and the say they said the only reason they couldn't go faster was because the there were no baffles in the tender because that was the old tender design, and so the water was sloshing around like mad and trying to throw them off the track. Oh, gotcha. Tenders have a bunch of baffles to prevent water sloshing super quick one way, side to side, forward, back, etc., so that Dude, you don't accidentally beat yourself. shaking on this corner. What the heck? It's a big engine, man. Are so you this, feeling that, though? I like, do it's, feel it's that. Like, it's like rocking the whole corner. That's so it's, weird. It's hunting pretty bad through the corner. Yeah, like it must All have... Right, hold on, hold on. I got to set this. It must be one of the longer rigid wheelbases. Or just go full speed through the switch. You're fine. It's fine. I slowed down, kind of. All right, you're good. Crazy man, you. It's fine. It's the Kenosha. You got to send this one in honor yeah, of the man apparently himself. It, it just hunts through the corners. That's so weird. Yeah, it must be based on the size because I think it's one of the bigger rigid wheelbases in the game. So rigid wheelbase being the the drivers. Yeah, right? but I thought I thought we were I thought we took this with the Tweetsie, and it's it's got to be a Tweetsie might be longer rigid wheelbase. You're right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't weird. know why it hunts so bad, but that's fine. I don't, I don't remember it hunting that bad before, but who knows? Yeah, some physics chicanery, I'm sure. Yeah. So the, you know what I just realized? What? I just realized we can still spawn. Corn. Oh, it's fine. You just you just gonna load the train on the fly? Well, no, but I think to speed up our life and not play loading simulator twenty five. Oh, we we, we drive there and just and then load the cars and, just, and, then, and just you know. I can live with that. I can I can live with that. We we loaded the cordwood at the uh, at the depot. Yeah, we they just had the more laborers that day. I totally forgot that that isn't patched out. But that really does save us. They 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 so badly need to upgrade industries in this game. Like by this point, we should be able to spend our money upgrading industries. Because I would gladly spend money to upgrade industries. So it's like one push loads the whole car. Right. You know. Gladly. Yeah. Because that's just it's just a time saver. There's no benefit to it otherwise. Right. It's snowing, by the way. I'm just standing out here. Oh. Uh, and and I will add while, while we're talking about the uh, the spawny things, like we saw the comments. I had about 50% people saying, D- dude, like they put it in the game, use it. And 50% of people saying, no, don't oh, cheat. Just so spawn it to, to so we, we, didn't, we didn't cheat to get this. We did some runs, made it happen. I was pretty close to the money that we needed. You had like, for, already for like this five thing. grand. We I, right, I had five right grand and, and we like we needed 56 grand. like a thousand so it was, bucks. Yeah. It was not a big deal. Um, but, you know, we're going to play it right, and uh, we may or may not have a save with a bunch of money just for uh, shenanigan reasons, you know, for the future. Oh, yeah, I should probably make that save. I haven't you know, done that yet. It's, uh, it's fine. May, we may or may not. Like I said, we, we also there might not. There used to be a way so. to just, like, file edit your save to get thousands uh, of dollars. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure there still is, and I'm pretty sure it still oh. works. So, you know, oh, okay. worst case, well, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah, I'm not, like, I'm not too worried. It's lots but, of cool uh, third-party railroads online tools if you haven't looked at them. Rose uh, Railroad Studio, Railroads Online Extended, all that stuff. You can really 
make all that sort thing of stuff haunts. Good like, God, it, it really does. I never remember it being this bad in UE4. I feel like it's something's changed, you know. Do you have brakes off? Like, everything's... I think so. Yeah, yeah it is. Breaks. It is not like in these turns, even at... And these are sh these are shallow turns. Yeah, that's weird. I've never seen something hunt that bad. I mean, Betsy does, but Betsy's designed to hunt more, so... Yeah, Betsy also has no leading wheels, so it's like... Precisely, yeah. Yeah, this God, yeah really... it's just rocking so, like that's just, I would be just, terrified just... if my engine was rocking that bad. This is rocking and rolling. It's fine. Alright, yeah. so you're just gonna drive by nice and slow and I will just spam the cordwood button as you drive by. Alright, that sounds to... sounds legit. Get get the loads going. Yeah. I will say the uh, the real class seventy, it doesn't waddle quite like that. I mean it does waddle left and right because it's got a really it's short main rod. Middle blind drivers, though, right? Middle get... blind drivers, but the the big thing is the main rod is super short. That's the rod from the uh, the cylinder from the wrist pin all the way down to the second driver that actually provides the power to the wheels. It's super short, so the aspect ratio, how much it goes up and down, is a lot compared to how much it goes forward and back. So you get all this momentum up okay, and down, okay. and it'll but start waddling. Here's me thinking from an engineering perspective, right? Wouldn't a short rod be worse in terms of force because you'd need more force to push it because the steeper the angle, like sign of the angle, you're going to get that much force actually going to move the wheel rather than... So, you yes, but not when you compare it to the wheel itself because the, the bigger you make the wheel relative to your force, um, the more... Chat, like, the less advantage you have. So making it move further in relation to the actual wheel itself means you get more mechanical advantage compared to the wheel and so, so if it's a shorter rod gives you more mechanical advantage even though it's I well so it i mean we, you don't you don't have it. you don't have any more advantage with a shorter main rod versus a longer one in you terms of than that. yes i can sorry i, I didn't can realize i spam the, the living crap out of this i just... i centered my johnson bar Look at that. and it uh it did you not want some cordwood my... oh my god okay so i'm gonna just gonna go i'm just gonna keep like, hold on, I could just, this is great. This this saved us like three quarters of the episode time right here. <laughs> oh my goodness, God. That's ridiculous. The hey man, it's, it's, a it's not the fountain of youth, it's the fountain of cordwood. We we need, we got cordwood needs, man. We got, we got needs. This is, this is, this is the best patch to railroads online. I know right, I asked yeah, that question last bubble. time, you but this is actually. Add, they don't need yeah. to add better cranes. Okay, might need to slow down. I can't keep up. <laughs> oh, maybe, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Yeah, they don't need to. They don't need to add uh, add faster cranes. You see, to keep this in, so we could just load, you know, proper. That's right? brilliant. Yeah. This is a lot. This is a huge time. You know how we would still be on like the first two cars. We would literally be still on the first two cars. Yeah. Yeah. This is. We're not. We're not cheating, guys. We're still. Man, we're if we still... ran the tweetsy, this episode would have been done in fifteen minutes. Just like zip there and I back. Know, right? Yeah. Well, we had to get the class 70. We were behind on numbers, right? We so did. We're on we to 21, did. and we had the Tweetsie's 34. So now we're up to 45. No, 55, is... right? No, 55. 55. Math. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, math is hard, dude. I'm like... Dude, that's. I became an engineer, so I didn't have to do math. Yeah, right? Excel, Excel, man. Excel, Excel saves, yeah. saves lives. But anyway, like, short, shorter main rod versus longer main rod doesn't change your force at the wheel in terms of your pulling force, right? But no, it but does... it changes the force the piston has to exert. That was my point. Because if you have a longer rod and a shallower angle, like the force that the piston is going to exert on the wheel is going to be much higher compared to the piston. You know what I mean? Well, it's all about it's it's all about torque, man. Like when you're at the bottom and you're in the middle of the power stroke and the rods are down at the bottom, that's when you're getting yeah, your biggest a, lev lever arm. Like four, but if that's at a 45 degree angle. Okay. Because the arm is so short. Like, if the arm's at a 45 degree angle because that's short, your piston's pushing linear, and then it has to transfer that force linearly to a 45 degree angle. You're oh, I, su lose. I suppose if it was even shorter, I see what you're saying. If it was really, really lose, short. Right? Versus yeah. a really long rod, you're going to lose force right. coming out of the piston because it's not not all that force is going to make it down. Some of it's going to try and push the wheel up rather than across. Right. Okay, I see what you're saying now, but I think in railroad engineering, they assume it doesn't matter. that it doesn't matter because the, the lengths are never really on that extreme. Like if you had a really short one, even shorter than this with a worse aspect ratio, you, what right. you're saying is right, where it would be trying to push it down more so than straight back and forth. But that's why we have a crosshead and, and line everything up that way too. So, right. um, 
But the point is, it, it does impart some of that force, like more up and down force, because of the weight of the rods and right, like just yeah, doing their this, thing. This is, it's funny, I was just about to mention that. This is where you get into the lovely mathematical equation of inertia versus force. Right. Where more stuff to move requires more inertia. It has more inertia, which right. requires more force to move. And, you know, less so if you have a bigger rod, those rods aren't going to be light. So that's going to be more force required that goes to the rod just to move it. But you get a better mechanical advantage at the wheel. So that's, right. that's the balancing equation. So it's an interesting thing, though, and, and it, it yields basically when 346, when you're trying to get started, the heavy train behind you. Oh, my God. It, Dude, it, it does it does a little nuts. bit it does a little bit of that actually like it really does where it'll dance left and right a little bit when it's pulling hard and so much so that it'll start ringing its own bell like That's awesome it's it's pretty funny to watch you can watch uh, videos of 346 there's a great clip of me uh, running 346 back in 2016 you can see baby heist and uh, <laughs> I start bouncing my head left and right mocking the engine because she was bouncing so bad but the engines with main rods that connect on three, don't have that problem, so it's a it's an interesting thing. You you'll see the bigger engines um, and different design engines, like some of the cousins of 346 in the class 70, about the same size, but they connected it on main rod number three, and it was just we're figuring all that stuff out in this era. So it's modern a neat thing. modern diesels, right? They right. run one electric motor per truck or per axle. Uh, one per axle, uh, depending per on axle. depending on. So like a, a most big road power these days are a six axle, um, like four hundred fifty thousand pound ish locomotive, somewhere right. in that order. Like four fifteen to four fifty depends on the manufacturer. Most of them have six traction motors. There are a lot these days that are four traction motors instead, though, with a weight management system that picks up the middle wheel set. The middle, to, yeah, the, the to let more weight go on, yeah change normal force by adjusting how much right. the middle axle relieves. And and e they say that it works great, but anyone who's really run any of that stuff will tell you that... Wants, the, wants six direct drives. You, you, want, you want the six. Like, if you're really trying it's, to pull it's tonnage... It's a straight gear. Like, it's just electric motor, gear, boom, done. Electric motor, I mean, it's a gear set, so gear on the wheel, gear on the motor. Um, right. Yeah, boom, done. And then the motors just regulate the voltage, and boom, done, the motor moves. Uh, probably, yeah. Or regulate the current, one or the other. Yeah, one, one of them's. I don't, I don't remember. It's DC or AC. I'm they have both. DC. They have both. So yeah. Well, they have both, of course. Yep. Of course they do. They did DC for the longest time, and then they changed. To, and a lot of the manufacturers are moving to just AC these days because no brushes, less maintenance. Yeah. I mean, you can get brushless DCs as well. That's what my RC stuff runs you, on. You can. I, I don't know if you can do it at that size. But not with a commutator that's like two feet in diameter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because we we run all brushless DC and it's it's a huge power save. Um, right. You can get a you can get a brushed motor that goes just as fast as a brushless, uh, but they're louder first off because there's a little bit of friction and you burn more power to keep it running. Like right. my, the RC cars, they'll run much longer on brushless. And generally speaking, brushless motors are are much faster. It's it's pretty common that you'll get a brushless motor that's faster. Right. Um, I'm gonna slow down because we got the junction. Left. Yeah. yeah. It's really foggy this episode. <laughs> I know it's weird. It, like the weather's set random. Uh, we do have the day-night cycle still enabled. I know I had some people saying, you know, if you want to turn it off for YouTube, that's fine. We just started the episode at the beginning of the day. We changed the time to the beginning. Yeah, of the day. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see started. if it descends so, into nighttime. So yeah, I guess I got to throw slow. the train off the cliff because I mean it's day shift and we got to be incompetent. And we've been Bro, too you're competent probably gonna so walk far. Off the cliff with just the way that this I, thing is I'm gonna I'm gonna send it and see what happens. So you know, yeah. it's fine. The engine I guess falls I should get off. on the first forward car, so if you lose the tender, or the engine, I can just <laughs> yeah, break. You can get some break. That's probably for the best. But, you know, if we wreck the Kenosha on its inaugural run, I mean, that's just par for the course. I really should be just, like, absolutely hammered on whiskey right now, which is unfortunate. I'm not in the, the spirit of the evening today. But, <laughs> but you, gotta, you gotta take your whiskey, you gotta put it in the glass push it around and throw it away oh dude and i've then, seen that guy you see that dude, dude that guy i love is, i love that video he's I, nuts i watched that I, and i was explaining it to my fiance and i was like you have to realize like people think it's a, a meme or a joke this guy is he's dead, dead serious serious like, about how you drink is, scottish that is, whiskey his profession is professional whiskey he, tasting he is like, a whiskey is, sommelier like yeah, that is he his is thing very serious about everything he says like he puts the, the glass right into his nose 100 <laughs> percent hello good morning yeah. How are you? 
you know, quite nice. Don't thanks. knock back like a cowboy. You know, don't you gotta you gotta like put a your cowboy. in the picture to sense the water temperature. <laughs> yeah, dude, and he's like, real. he tells you all the times that he's got whiskey ruined by warm water. He's like, back in 1975. You know, it's like Just he like, knows every. How does this dude. man remember this stuff? Yeah. Yeah, that's his, that's his dedication. <laughs> Just right there. That's amazing. Yeah, that uh, that man likes his Scottish whiskey. I mean, yeah. Get, yeah, I mean, Scotch is good, man. I'm I'm a fan, but I'm not that much of a fan. I'm not I'm not freaking out about I that like, like a good whiskey. There's a good yeah. whiskey, but I uh, I I'm enough of a whiskey connoisseur that I have um marble uh stones in my freezer oh nice whiskey stones um, don't dilute that yeah, stones. Yeah. so oh, like oops. i'm enough of a connoisseur where because if you put an ice cube in it the ice cube melts and throws off the flavor right. so i do have proper whiskey stones that you just put them in they keep your drink cool but that's they don't the to do change it. the flavor right i mean some people that's like my, to that's add my extent of whiskey drinking some people you know? add a little water to make it you know change the balance a little bit and you can get more flavors brought out that way I tend to just go neat. If it's the summer, I'll go with ice. But I think I think I, my favorite. I like to put in a, a, a splash of water. I think the connoisseur guy said you want thirty percent water. Is what he said. So. Yeah, th thirty. I think it was thirty-five percent was the ABV you wanted. Yeah. Take it down. Like you know, t tone. Dude, it's tone foggy. Back the yeah. What is this weather? What the? Uh, we just need to see that. Although we this can't bridge see. looks really cool in the fog. It does. Really, it does. Yeah. Interesting. God, I love the I love the proportions of the class seventy two. It's such a good looking engine. You you are you are you are shaken. It, was my tender jumping up and down or is that just am I getting oh, the beginning of popcorn? Sorry, not jumping though. Okay, so we're we finally bought enough rolling stock to start getting popcorning. See, people keep asking how we don't get popcorning on the client side, uh, how we've avoided it, and the oh, answer is, that, is, is that that's, we, it's just the, literally the number of the cars number of you cars you have. So we've we finally oh. hit the number of rolling stock where um, my uh, my POV is just going to get uh, either more and more entertaining or more and more frustrating to watch. Dealer's that's, choice. That's awesome. <laughs> it's fine, but we have nice weather though, so that's uh, that's fun. And the sun yeah. came out. Look at that. If they could just remove the speed limits on the class 70, that'd be great. Yeah, like, so the real one doesn't go stupid fast because it's got little drivers, but I mean, it could still probably do 30. Like, I just realized, like, for some reason, when the sun came out, my computer dropped to 30 FPS. <laughs> that That's uh, that's a fun feature. Which which doesn't, like, it doesn't make sense. Oh, I'm not cooking my graphics. I just wanted to check to make sure I wasn't cooking my graphics. Oh, uh, you know, I'm it's, not. it's fine. It's fine. I'm not, for the record. It's it's running a cool 65 degrees. But then the there question is, why is it only getting 30 FPS? Uh, maybe your CPU locked or something. Who knows? No, my CPU is running. It's, like, like not even running at 20%. So. Mm. Well, who knows? Yeah. Strange. My favorite it's just stupid, uh, things. my favorite stupid whiskey thing is, uh, is railroader related on my 21st birthday uh i had a great friend of mine he passed away a couple years back a great guy from the museum a uh, guy named fred and uh, he's actually lettered 491's cab is named after him because he was a guy that worked for the rio grande for 42 years sweetheart nice guy hard worker uh and just really funny dude to be around and i wanted a I wanted a shot of whiskey with fred on my birthday on my 21st birthday and, right. and he asks, well, hey, man, you know, what, what are we shooting? And I said, oh, I don't know. How about we shoot some Jameson? And he goes, nah, man, that's sipping stuff. <laughs> it's just like you, you, you've characterized the railroader as a man in that moment that, no, you can't shoot Jameson. You can't. You can't do that. That's the sipping stuff. <laughs> Every time I think of uh, railroaders and, and whist it's like that's that's the level right there. That's where they're at. Me and my, <laughs> me and my buddies, we used to play... Um a lot of golf at this one golf course and uh they never had uh whiskey at, at, on the at the bar um that seems to there, antithetical like, to the nature right, like the origins so like, of golf right so we used to like go to this one golf course all the time and they like most golf courses, they just have a lot of beer and so finally we we played enough at this course where they started to recognize you can go ahead two more two Still more clear oh goodness yeah. the, the car has stopped rendering so i assumed i was fine three 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 more actually okay but anyway we played enough at this course where finally we were like listen can you just like keep a bottle of jameson at the bar and then we'll come in and drink it so we'd go out we'd play nine holes come in have a glass of whiskey go back out play the next nine you know right that'll be the day uh i need to grab the class 48 you need to oh i, I need guess... to get out of the way right okay um 
It's it's no, nighttime now. We, we've entered night 48. shift. Yeah, we've entered night shift. Oh goodness. No, we need the class forty eight on the other end. Uh, okay. Well, I'll start putting a fire in it because I'm on well, this end just, of the universe. Yeah, you could just if you back up. Let me just make sure you're lined in here. That comes in that way. You're coming in this way. You're backing up there. Yeah, you can back up with your locomotive um, for a while, and I'll tell you to stop. And we might be able to just run around. Oh, perfect. This is okay. this is great. This night op stuff. Is I'm, gonna... I'm <laughs> we're night switching now, man. Uh, I've put a fire in the class 48. And I've got its headlights turned on. Okay. Um, let's see. What is the client render distance on headlights? Okay, it is horror game levels. It is about yeah, I'm trying to use 200, lantern here 200 feet. Oh, that's right. There's a lantern. I almost yeah, forgot. Doesn't, doesn't <laughs> MLG. MLG. Oh, man. Yeah, we probably needed the class 48 in front because I don't think we're going to be able to get it around once you... So uh, that's fine. I don't know if we have a big enough line. Although we can split your train in half. So just you just back up slowly. <laughs> I might tell you to stop, and then we might have to split you, put you into two different sidings because we have okay. four sidings here, right? So right. Let's break the train in half. I think nine fit in those sidings. So yeah, I think we have to do two two stacks of nine, and then we can run the class forty around. You can turn on the turntable and play the mini game. Right. Oh my god. Can't see oh, that's anything. Cool. It's fine. If you run backwards your lantern leaves like light projections in the sky that's i don't even know what you mean by the that vibe. so um excited to figure that out see look no snow this way yes snow this way no snow right, this I'm, way i'm protecting yes, the shove <laughs> by standing on the back with the lantern that's uh that's a vibe i mean i'm sure you're back there somewhere i can't see you you're you're yeah. you, like i can't even see like, normally I can see your floating player character, but I can't see that because it's so dark, and your lantern apparently does not render um, what, what time is it? Let me just check here. You, is, there, so. is there a way to gameplay here? It's, it's uh, uh, 1927. Oh, God. We're gonna this be... is 730 right now? Are you this kidding me? This, this is night. It, it, it's, it's winter still, right? Hey, man, right? shut up, hey? You, you, live, you live so far south. You're so, like, appreciative of it. Dude, I lived in Seattle I lived in for... The north. I you lived in Seattle for, like... 7.30 is nighttime for us, okay? <laughs> I've lived in Seattle for, like, 23 years or 24 years of my life. Um, yeah, I'm gets, used to the the 4 p.m. sun goes down. I'm pretty sure yeah, Seattle's at the, the winter, same. In the yeah, winter, man, the sun is down at like 4:30, 5 o'clock. Yeah. Toronto and, and Seattle are probably on the same. They're uh, pretty close. Which, yeah. Whichever north south one is called longitude, latitude, uh, latitude. I don't, I don't yes. remember maps. One of them. Study hard in school, kids. It's very important, <laughs> it's, and you uh, get to fine. play railroads with heist. It's true. It's very true. Uh, you got to go back like uh, five cars maybe, and then stop six. Five, okay. six, can't really five. tell. It's actually just two black lines. And okay, slow down. Okay, working on it. Okay, yeah. I'm actually okay. I, I I know I'm clowning a little bit here, but like I'm actually enjoying watching the the smoke right, stop. being stop. I'm enjoying stop. the smoke being lit up by the the headlight. That's fun. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Yeah, you can't fit can't fit 12 in here. So I'm going to break it at 9. Okay. All right, you can go forward now. Yeah, it's you can't fit 12, so there's no point breaking it at 10 because it's groups of 3 to unload, right? So I might as well just break it at 9 and Right, right. And then do another 9 in the next row over. Crazy, man. Crazy. Hey, I can see your lantern now and you. That's cool. Uh 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 Okay, you're good to go back. Okay. And then just stop when you're, you know, lined up with once you've cleared that the yard switch. I'll go grab the class 48 now. Okay. And then you can run <sighs> and play the turntable rotating game. Yep, the mini game. To get us back. And mini to... game in the dark. That seems like a vibe. Solo, dude. Solo 180 turntabling with uh, no brakes. Gonna have to be real cool. Yeah. You got this. No big deal. Okay, so like. If you have a steam engine, right, you turn off all the brakes, okay? Okay. So you have no brakes on it. You have no steam pressure running in it. You turn the reg to zero. You turn the, the Johnson bar to zero, right? So there's no steam moving into the cylinders. It'll eventually stop with friction. Right. Won't it? Yeah. 
how long would that take, do you think? Is it a really long, like, if you're at speed, that'll be forever? I mean, momentum, like momentum's a thing. It probably wouldn't be forever, but it would be a decent long time. Um, th there's a decent, like, th the plane bearings and everything, people, like, Timken shills call them a, uh, a friction bearing. And, right. and that's that's a lie from Timkin. Like, yes, there's more friction when you're trying to start because you're at static friction, right? You have to overcome that versus a roller bearing where you're always um, in rolling friction. But once you get the uh, the train started and once it's moving and you got oil wicked up and everything, the coefficient of friction with a roller bearing and a plane bearing are about the same. Yeah, but I mean like the locomotive itself. Like right, the locomotive, right. Like, and that's what the locomotive the... has. And you've got rods oh, you mean, and like, other, there's... yeah. There's friction bearings and all the piston rods and stuff too. Like that's where they all—they're all connected with just a friction bearing. Well, so the rods, not so much. The rods have a floating. I mean, it depends on the era, uh, because it always does. But usually these days they have a floating bronze bushing um, or brass in it that right. uh, that is actually like really kind of a sloppy fit. That's uh, oh hey look, there's all these lights now. That's fun. Yeah, I got I got back and front lights. Yeah, I'm really that rocking. Must, that must be nice. Okay, I'm, I'm the actual the... yard. This makes sense. This is the engine that you'd actually use for this because right. you could see. That's 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 why they had two lights on it. Oh, got it. But it is so vibey at night. I do like this. I'm just I'm just thinking like okay, so if you take a car and you let off the gas of a car, it'll right. slow down pretty quick. Right. Right. Uh, engine yeah. steam engine probably a lot faster. I mean, it, lots of little oh, things could or not faster, but it would stay running for a lot longer. Um, oh, like it would stay because there's less less moving stuff. Well, it's it's mostly because there's just so much momentum, so much weight, like right. that you got to stop all that mass, and it it doesn't like to stop. So, um, case in point, I've definitely allegedly seen a locomotive um, that uh, w was let to roll free once, and uh, yeah, it was going two mile an hour, but it uh, it sure wanted to go through the back wall of the shop. It, it didn't, just kept going. but it, uh, it really it really wanted to. So. Okay, this is great. I wish I could plop the lantern down. Like the fact that it's just know, welded to me. I know. Put it somewhere and then just be able to. Yeah, yeah. that would be. Not, How much money do you have now, by the way? Uh, should I join uh, your company? It's, it's I don't know. First, like, let me look. Let me let me spot where it's safe and there's still friction. I have five hundred ninety-three dollars. All right, I'm gonna join your company. I have okay. two hundred. Okay, I think I'm on the turntable. This is this is hard mode, con. Yeah, I know. This is That's, this is this gotta, is you know, get good. This is extra hard mode. Oh my god, I didn't see that cordwood car at all, and then I shone my lantern like shined, shone, shone my lantern, shined. One of those words. One of them. Yeah, and then all of a sudden the car just appeared in front of me. It was weird. That it's a horror game. Always yeah. has been. Okay, yeah. I think. What's I that think train? that's like uh, not rolling. Choo Choo Charles. Choo Choo Charles. Horror? Yes, that is the Charles? that is the horror train game, and horror that game is game. a horror train game. That uh, that game was I played through that on a live stream back in December when it came out, and that game was just a vibe. Well, it was historically accurate, I thought, right? Like oh yeah, a yeah, oh something like that. Had, yeah, you know what? It was the great... What? 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 What in the railroads I... online is going on here? Is this client side? Right. Is this client side? The turntable is turning out from underneath the locomotive. The locomotive uh, is stuck oh, in stuck is in too. position. Look at that. Well, that's interesting. Um, you turning? Oh yeah. Okay. Well. Well, that's a, that's an interesting. That's a, that's a new one. This this is that's an neat. accurate historical never, never simulation seen, never of seen that one railroading in the American Midwest. Like this is how they did it. Your brakes work though. I've noticed. Uh, yeah, now that they're no longer on the turntable because they're in the dirt break, because the, the turntable rotated that's, out from underneath it. That's uh, that's that's a vibe, I guess. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen when the table gets all the way around again. Oh, will it catch it and then keep going? That'll be. I don't know. That's cool. The new experience every this day. This is uh, yeah, something new. Yeah. And is uh, it we've catch done. It? Is it? No, no, nope. it just keeps going. Okay. Well, I guess I'll back the turntable up well, and then try and move have, the engine. You might as well, again? I guess, I finger it. I don't, no, I don't I, know. No, I mean, I want to see if there's a way to rectify this first, and then, and then All I right, guess we'll five finger I'm it. I'm gonna keep unloading cordwood. Oh, I can turn my lights off now. Yeah, you've Thank got <laughs> the, the mini game just needed to get harder so that 
you know, I'm doing something while you're unloading cordwood for the that's, next uh, century. That's, that's an interesting one. I've never, that's, never uh, really... that, that is a new one, that's for sure. Yeah, that's something new. I could have sworn it was getting lighter out, and then I put away my lantern, and now it's really dark again. Yeah, so. I thought it was getting lighter too, and then and then I got in the engine, and it got really and now it's really yeah. dark again. Yeah. Um, so. I got in the engine, and I moved it, and it like jumped when I moved it. Okay. Okay. No, it's 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 rotating now. Weird. God, switching at night would suck. Yeah, it's it's not ideal. You just can't see anything like I can't even see even with like you know host or whatever I can't even see the switch stand of that's, the switch like, that's why or, they or, had or the switch end. lamps mm -hmm. yeah I can't even see the end of track where like I need to park this cordwood switch so. lamps would be cool that would be that'd be nice I don't understand it was bright for like two seconds and then it got dark again so I uh, shrug here we are it's almost there. Almost rotated all the way around. It's fine. Is it still stuck? Uh, no, it, it, uh, it, when I moved it, it, it picked back up again. Oh, weird. So, it, like, it did, like, a jump, like it had sunk into the ground or something. And now it's rolled off the end of the table as soon as I got it lined up. Perfect. Um, but it might, I, may, I mean, I might be able to back it on. It's fine. Oh, the lightning really helps. Yep. Okay, nothing ever happened. Don't pay no attention to the ruts in the dirt. <laughs> the lightning does help very briefly. Um, you basically have to go all the way out to the main. Uh, just kinda yeah, we could, we could, we, we main. could do that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, we shouldn't really follow the main, but no one else is coming. On That's the true. Yeah, there's, so. there's, uh, timetable says we can occupy it. We'll send the yeah, flagman so out. It'll just be fine. On the main, and then we'll have to bring all this back out with uh, the class forty-eight. Sure. Yeah, there's just empty. The should track, be but... able to do it. Yeah. Gonna just go a little slower, so we don't dunk that hard. There we go. I wish you could hold up your lantern to actually see. Yeah, like, that just... would also be nice. I could click a button and hold my lantern up and have it sort of project a little bit more forward. Is it going to be daytime anytime soon? What do you think? I don't, I don't know. We're night shift boys, so, you know. Night shift doesn't seem like it's the most productive. No, well, you know, it's fine. See, Con, if you can hold your lantern up if you just jump around like a crazy robot. You, you yeah, can see a lot of stuff that way. It doesn't give me any extra lantern viewing distance. Are you are you good? Have you parked your engine now? Can I you have. start switching? I'm for coming me? coming to help with you. Yeah. Yeah. This this cordwood delivery is really is really an experience unlike no other. Okay. Especially uh, because by the time you've unloaded it, it's already gone. It's already been consumed. Well, you know, it's it is the smelter. It is a hungry beast. Yeah. If it could use, I don't know, coal, that'd be nice. Let's see. You Probably are. Probably Americans. You're always pushing coal power on everybody. Well, you know. Mm, all right, I just coal. kicked those because that's all they, we need to they do. They looked like they're aligned. They ah! Should be. <laughs> Cordwood car jump scare. <laughs> oh, that was terrifying. It's fine. <laughs> We're just running in the gauge, and then all of a sudden, like. 10 feet in front of me it was this cordwood car doing 10 mile an hour. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, man, they come up quick. They, they do. <laughs> They're sneaky in the night. Okay, bring him ahead. I'm going to go get new pants. It's fine. I got I got a pin already oh, in okay. mine. Okay. So, should be good. I just needed you to cut three there. Right. Once I dunk them. I mean, I can cut them first, and then you can dunk them. Either way. Dunk. Dunk, 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 dunk. Okay, pin to take him. Back him up. All right. All right, I'll get you lines for the uh, the empties next. See, I feel like this industry would have been so much better if it was flipped. Right. Cord, cord like, was the 
I have to switch the out the can... iron and then cord yeah, would you switch you. out the iron and cordwood was just a straight line. Yeah, that would that would be a lot nicer. You need so much more cordwood. Honestly, if I was a train Lined. company and I had to deliver to the smelter on a regular basis, I would be like, guys, you need to fix your your move, unload. Move your unloading location. We are not unloading here. We are going to unload in a pile next to that, and you can deal with it. Yeah, I mean it's cordwood, so it, it is stored in fact in a pile. So. You know what we could do, actually, just to be super meta? We could extend the switches all the way out straight, right? And then just have a bunch of, like, straight tracks next to it and just re-rail cordwood cars onto them and use it like an elevator so you unload to the cordwood car, which then unloads to the next cordwood I've, car. I've done that on a save before. You transload yeah. between cars and then and the then it's last just cars like, oh, done. done. Conveyor belts. Get out of here. Yep. All right. Unloading. Unloading. And... Uh, you need a little It'll be bit fine. more. Oh. Yeah, keep them coming. That'll do. Dunk. Dunk. Oh, we're starting to make a stockpile. That's good. Must have run out of iron. Well, we brought. Oh, no, no. Here. It's, it's oh. being eaten. Never mind. I was about to say, yeah, we brought a bunch of iron here last time, so we should have. Lots to do, yeah. Yeah. Okay, lined kick him. All oh, right, yeah, I can take the pin out here. Oh my goodness! Oh god! Daytime. I hope, I hope that worked. I hope it's daytime for real. All right, ride, ride in the kick. Wee! They are. That is a fast kick. That is a very fast kick, and it ran me over. That's fine. You're dead. I've been. I've, I've died today. Yeah. It's fine. We'll have we'll have a service for you later. Oh, okay. Uh, but we still need you to switch out these cars. Well, I mean that is the railroad way. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just gonna Timmy, let this foul. Unfortunately, yeah. Your it's... father died today. It's he was fine. crushed by a car. Violence. So naturally, you're gonna have to work the rest of his shift. <laughs> Precisely. How did you know America? But I. But I'm well? six. Oh, it's fine, Tibby. It's fine. Not you're not the youngest one we've had. <laughs> Remember that. I mean, remember that scene in Snowpiercer where like the train was was driving? Have you you've seen Snowpiercer? I right? have not seen Snowpiercer. Oh, good. You need to really. Which, which is like a, a crime as somebody who does things with trains. That's apparently. another I've, train I've movie. I don't want to ruin it for you. Then you got to really watch Snowpiercer and okay. really experience. Is, it, uh, uh, is that very, another one that I need to be violating general rule G for? Well, at, at the very end, see, because my back. my biggest question, being an engineer, was uh, you know you have a train that supposedly runs forever. To, to combat global warming. That is the premise. Um, <laughs> There's so many holes in this already. <laughs> yeah, so like, so like basically the premise without ruining the story is like, you know, the planet's frozen over and- they And have trains this, can solve it, got it. Right, and, and the only people left on the entire planet are stuck on this train that runs 365 days a year uh, on a track that goes all the way around the world. Um, I, want, I want to know how that maintenance schedule works out. Right, so there's, uh, so there's, there's track maintenance schedules. This is the first problem that I thought of. Yeah, Second MOW, the local, yeah. Locomotive maintenance. But they did explain at the end of the movie how the locomotive maintenance works. So I really, it, you really need to watch it and just, just really experience that. <laughs> okay. That, that lovely piece of knowledge. Yep, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to learn whatever that is. Maybe it's like the counter thrust from Unstoppable. Uh, no. no, it's better. It's I better, promise you this better, is better. It's better than the counter thrust? Oh, I, I don't even want to ruin it. Just watch Snowpiercer uh, and then we'll talk about it. And you'll, come not on. the TV show, though. The movie. The there's movie. movie and okay. Show. Bring, bring him ahead. Yeah, the, the movie really is what gives you the the real the real vibe of, uh, yeah, it's a good <laughs> it's a good time. But yeah, I have lots of questions. The train, it t t drives 24-7. Um, uh, they don't. They don't actually. I just realized they don't address the fuel thing. I don't think they don't address where it gets its fuel. Well, from. Well, maybe, maybe it's like uh, maybe they've got like the the Pennsylvania Railroad water scoop shenanigan, but it's for diesel fuel or something. That, I don't, that... Well, they did talk about it gets it gets all its water from the front of the train. It, it sucks up snow and melts it into water. They did say that. Okay, I mean that's like that's a vibe, but so is that... it a steam train? I don't know. I thing, mean, okay, maybe. well, whatever, it like it's fine. I mean, that's like that's somewhat based in 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 not fiction. Like when you run rotary ops and you've got like three or four engines shoving on a rotary snowplow to try and clear the line open, um, yeah. 
it, you shovel snow into the tender for more water. Like you're not making it to a water plug and you're working the engine so hard that they just shovel snow into the tenders and that's that's like part of the crew's job. Yeah, no, I, I get that. But that's uh, that's a uh, that's a different thing. That's uh, that's different than mythical snow slurping train. Yeah, I was more the best part of the movie Here is can get the whole the whole plot of the movie. Um it finalizes in this big thing where they explain how they get spare parts for the locomotive. Oh man. Yeah. I'm I'm excited for this. And that's it's it's really good and I'm like it just gives me real 1920s vibes, you know, like or not not 1820s I mean, you know, real okay. real It's good, man. You you'd really like it. This this sounds like something cursed that my sister would make me watch and I'm less, surprised she's not made me watch it yet. Though, and more of like a drama, I would say a drama that has trains involved so is yeah. it is it working at a, at the railroad because that's well, that's and what the that problem is. is like the movie itself was like you know it was full of plot holes and all this stuff and it was really like you know your typical really poorly done train movie <laughs> um but it was like for what it was it wasn't it wasn't the worst but then netflix makes a tv show right okay. and with the, with the movie you're like they could be in train cars. Like the size of the set made sense for train cars. Okay. Um, you know, there were some cars that were taller, like the extended passenger cars and stuff. But for the most part, the width made sense. It was like, yeah, this could be a train car that feels like the right width, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. And then Netflix makes the freaking season because the movie was popular enough that Netflix is like, hey, let's butcher it. And they made their <laughs> sets like as wide as a freaking engine shed. And it's like, it doesn't make sense. This isn't like you're trying to convince me that you're on a train by bobbing the camera and stuff, but your your train car would be like on a three three wide track. Like what the heck are you guys doing, you know? It's fine. They might have been using like Brunel's like seven foot gauge or something. You never know. Yeah, like like times two though. Like seven foot <laughs> gauge is uh, twice. Like it, it was honestly it was so bad because it's like at least in the movie, like, yeah, it doesn't make sense for trains, but they at least got the width of the sets right so that it looked like you were inside a train car. Netflix is like, herp derp, you're in a barn going down the track. We're Netflix. <laughs> like, vibes. It was really, it was really bad. Okay. Ruined it. Well, that's, uh, that, that'll be something that I can traumatize myself with later, I guess. Yeah, though the TV show is far worse than the movie. The movie is much better than the TV <laughs> show. 100%. Well, but I'll you know that's just, the list. that's just Netflix in general, though. That's just like it's like it's like what we do on YouTube, but they do it worse. That's like Netflix's motto, you know? Okay. So like, if you have a video that does well on YouTube, you're gonna try and recreate that concept, right? Right. In, in some capacity, because you're like, hey, it did well. Maybe if I do it a little differently, that'll also do well, right? And Netflix is like, if we do it worse, it'll also do well. <laughs> right. right. Like that's that's how that works. That's how it works. It's like they're <laughs> learning from YouTubers, but in a bad way. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, that's uh, I mean that makes a lot of sense to me. So anyway, that's the end of my Netflix rant. There you go. Yeah. All right. Unloading the first one. Unloading the second one. Yeah, I know you have terrible movie nights with your mm -hmm. with your sponsors, and you should really have a <laughs> snow piercer added to the list. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna have to do that. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's it's uh yeah. P yeah, plug plug for the USD train crew. I mean, uh, if you want to join yeah, the channel, a, it's a good. We uh, we, yeah. we hang out. It's fun. Con shows up sometimes every once in a blue moon. I, I do sometimes. It's uh, that's I'm a like fun, an, fun an honorary surprise. member. It's true. Uh, it's all through yeah. Discord, so you know, join the Discord. Links in the description of every video. So it's, it's a fun time. We're actually almost at five thousand members in my Discord, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for five thousand members to celebrate. Uh, get denied Discord partnership is what I've been doing. <laughs> it's fine. I've I've been really. I have like seven thousand something members on my Discord. You only need like a few thousand to be a Discord partner. Okay. I've applied to partners, like I've applied to Discord partner like four times. They've rejected me every time. Well, it's, I mean, you know, and they don't give fine. a reason for being rejected. They just say sorry, you suck, and then like you know. Does so I've given fine. up on applying for a Discord partner. At this I, point. Uh, okay, well, you know, details. Yeah, <laughs> but good luck, guys. Let me know how it goes. You'll probably yeah. get it. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Discord I was, I was like. more so thinking like we got a bunch of people event to celebrate. Maybe uh open up the ES and D and, and see if we can fill it. Cause apparently with the unreal five update, uh, you can have 64 players actually in the game now. Like oh, it's yeah, not that'll, just, that'll, that'll be, I have a not pin, just 16 so anymore. So I have a Lincoln pin. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
So that that sounds like chaos is actually attempting to play this game with 64 people. But um, you know what we we should do though if we're gonna do that we should get 64 players and start on a completely empty world and see how long and, it takes. <laughs> well, no, not even not even that, but just start an empty world and like everyone buys a Betsy or something or you know give everyone a Betsy with money or whatever or something like that some engine combo and everyone's racing as their own team to get track and go from some place to some place pick up the like, cards and come back t teams of three or four or something yeah so it's and like everyone's building like their own lines 16 of railroad just, companies right and they're all impeding each other's lines and stuff and like who cares if only there was some way to make that work like actually because it You'd get to the logging camp and that would be fine, but then you would try and build to the sawmill or something, bring it may head. And everyone would And then everyone just, would be yeah. stealing everyone else's commodities. Like Yeah. Yeah, that would be and then like the spawn yard, I mean the the interchanges, I mean it would be nuts. That would be funny though. It'd be fun to it try. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, that'd be silly. So anyway, thinking about doing something like that that might be fun for for celebrating five K members, because that's that's cool. I, it's hard to believe that there's 5,000 people that want to hang out in Discord, but here we are. Poof. All right, all three of those unloading. And, yep, you're good. Take them back. And uh, we just got three more, I think, and then we're going to be pinning yeah. these up and, and getting out of here. Five all on it out of here. Uh, careful. Con. 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 Dunk. Nice. What, did, did, like... What, what was that? There's for? no one protecting the shelf. That so was that's you, bud. That was clearly that's, you weren't protecting that's, the shelf. That's you. You you, you were on the shove end, friend. You, no, you were you were on the you, shove end. You you uh, you didn't you didn't protect the shove. This is you're why so, everyone. You're sounding an awful lot like day shift right now, Kyle. This, this, this was your fault. You didn't put in the thing with the thing, and then it didn't it did the thing. Did you did like did con.exe stop responding for five uh, seconds? No, I, I was trying to I was trying to get the pin out to I was like I'll save some time <laughs> by yeah. pulling the pin and look, out. While look we're going at how backwards. much time you added by <laughs> wrecking much, well, the train. I saved, I saved a lot of time, Heist. I don't think you understand. Okay, we're good. We're going forward, and we're undoing each other's links and pins. Link it's and fine. Yeah, you you I was un I was doing them one way, and you were undoing them the other way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Did you? you I've, it's then? rectified. It's fine. It was just very funny because it's like, well, I uh, put a pin in that, and then like the switch to put us into the. Uh, well, empty yeah, yeah, yeah. If the, you gonna micromanage line. me the whole way? This well, is day you know, shift. It's your fault. This we is just day shift, and you're so. the super. Look at this. Look at this gaslighting. The, 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 like, we don't even about. have gas to light in 1895. Yet here we are, and he's gaslighting me. Actually, they did, didn't they? Didn't they have gas? I don't know. It depends on what you call gas. I'm sure they had kerosene, but like gasoline. It, yeah, true. They would have been all kerosene lamps, right? Like gasoline, oil, I don't know. Great oil lamps. Yeah. Whale fat lamps. Blubber. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, bring them in. Uh, just don't, don't, don't hit too hard. Like maybe stay in the cab, there, friendo. Like. Oh, I don't. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I was checking the pin. It's fine. Is it? Are you? Are you pinned? You checked it. I am it's fine. And like, okay. Gonna need so. you to put your hand in there though and lift it up to make sure. Oh, we okay. Really... Yep. Yep. Maximize the danger. If you were, if you're doing that in real life, like the the, I don't know. I don't know what's called the housing of my pin, is like it would eventually hit the housing of your pin, like right. you just did. Did, what? I can I. Is, no, no. Is, this is this is no, no. Work. We're fine. No. We're fine. <laughs> We're good. It'll probably fix itself with this next switch. It'll anyway, probably. Like, yeah. You would have to literally jam your hand in there, hold the link up, and then yank your hand out as soon as the link's in the slot, but not before the two plates smash together. Correct. Which is why they're so dangerous. Jeez, that's so stupid. Yep. Uh, okay. So look. Back on. Look. Nothing happened. Pay no attention to those 100 Dude, that, scarred that's ties. That's like literally. That's literally the dumbest like thing ever. That would destroy your hand there's, so many times. There's a reason why they outlawed them. So, and you guys used you guys used like you know bars, little little wooden sticks. No, uh, they people died like men, so they just stuck their hand in there. They just lost their hand. It's, yeah, it's fine. Everyone in the and comments then, of my couplers video was, was like. Why wouldn't you just use like a stick or something? It's like I don't no, know. No, no, no. <laughs> Jimmy No Hands doesn't use sticks. Jimmy No Hands doesn't use sticks exactly. 
Yeah, Jimmy Nohans thinks sticks are just, for just are like for uh, the children. Just like Deaf Bob doesn't use earplugs. Yeah, exactly. I took I took a DB meter to the shop the one day when we were running back in my, my first time at the museum, and in the cab, the ambient in the cab of the steam engine's 85 dB. Which yeah, like means, a jet engine's like 130, isn't it? Well, yes, 130, 140, but it's a logarithmic scale, blah, 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 yeah, lots yeah, of things. No, I... But 85, if you're exposed to 85 for eight hours, you are getting uh, hearing damage, permanent hearing damage. So it's yeah. like, okay, that's just the ambient at the cab, and then you operate the brake valves, and it hits like 100, and it's like, okay, you really should be wearing earplugs in this if you would like What's your hearing. What's the piston on the piston exhaust? Uh, it, it's pretty loud, but it's not as loud because it's coming out the stack um, far right. away from you. The safety valve is super loud. Blowdown super loud. Um, uh, brake valves. I mean, the air, literally the automatic air brakes are super loud. Um, so that's the whole thing. I don't, we don't need to unpin for this one, do we? I mean, I guess you could just kick, matter, I'm shovel just shoving away. all the way yeah. out onto the, yeah. and then I have to back out, let you pass, and then I have to. Whistle super loud, me. bells decently loud, piercing, but like, yeah. So, I remember catching flack uh, back in the day for wanting to wear earplugs, and it's like, it's just safety culture, man. And and thankfully, it's so great now. Like, everyone's super supportive, and it's totally different. But, um, like earplugs, like simple thing, like, oh, you're you're a wuss if you use those, and it's like, you're literally losing your hearing forever if you're not using these right now, like. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, I mean, luckily, in automotive, I never experienced that. I mean, maybe back in the day it was worse, but in automotive, I, I never sure. experienced that. Like, yeah. everyone on the floor, man, like, even if you walk into the building and you're in, like, an office area, it's safety glasses, steel-toed shoes. Like, it's right. just, it's just, it's just, if you're in the building, you're wearing steel-toed shoes and safety glasses. If you're in any sort of major area where there's forklifts, like, all the forklift areas in every plant I marked were marked. Right. Uh, walkways you would walk on if you were a person like these big green painted walkways if you were off the walkway you had to have a vest on like a fluorescent vest right you we know? had we had uh, the same thing at bnsf like yeah that's how the shop set up and like i never really experienced anybody not following that um and then when i worked at a welding shop for a while still an automotive but like robotic welding of like subframes and cradles and stuff oh, that's gotta be cool everybody had full coveralls on because if you walk by a robot welding cell and some weld splatter comes shooting out, it is little balls of hot molten metal that if they land on your skin, they will cause you third degree burns because it will stick to your skin and just burn right through it. Yep, you don't want that. So, yeah, so we would have coveralls and like there would, I remember I got one on the arm and it burned right through the coveralls and just, cause it's like a little, little molten ball and it'll cool down eventually, but like, you know, it burns through your coveralls first. And then by the time it touches your skin, it's cold enough that it won't burn you, but like, right. it's, uh, yeah I yeah all the i time. had um we had a welder that worked at the museum for a while uh cool dude like super nice guy great welder uh but i have never seen a human being take off a boot faster than oh, that yeah, man weld, weld ball went down the boot weld slag down the boot i mean yeah. like he was sitting there welding the, one time and i was just walking around the corner to see what he's doing and then uh, the next thing i know his boot hit the front of the roundhouse that was 40 feet away just like yeah threw the thing off and it was like what was that like Oh yeah, I had weld slag fall down it. It's like, oh yeah. When I worked at when I worked at a weld shop, I used to like we used to do our boots up, but we would keep the top lace undone so you could just yank it off your foot. Just if you throw really it. To. Yeah, just totally just throw it because like yeah, it was even never you, tight enough to like. It doesn't you from just... seal right. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, otherwise you get anything down your shoe and you're undoing laces like you're. That's just terrible. Yeah, that's that's not ideal. So. All yeah. right. I'm, I'm pinned just gonna leave in. Go here, honestly, because I don't care, and I don't feel like walking. <laughs> it's the end of day shift. It's turning into night shift of again. Shift. So first, yeah, I'm just yeah, this night, night shift's problem. The uh, my headlight strobes with the chuffs. That's I'll uh, just leave it with the lights on too. It's uh, yeah. it's a the, the class seventy is a rave machine, man. Do you have a gas light? Yeah, it's Carol. Oil? Yeah. Oil. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna turn it off. Well, what if I need to see Dude, this, the, the shaking that this thing does is nuts. That is crazy. The side to side. It definitely didn't do that before this update. I no, it like definitely didn't. Really, yeah, I feel like something's different now. Yeah, I wonder what that's about. That's a good looking engine, though. You chopping down trees, Con? Yeah, just That's, that's dangerous. It hit the train. It's fine. 
No one's coming with us. Oh god, I'm stuck. There we go. Good old getting stuck in the. You notice too, Class 70 Tender doesn't have collision anymore. Look, I'm like, you look at playing hide and seek. Where am I? <laughs> are you in the wood pile? Yes, in you the are. Wood pile. <laughs> No, that's fine. Can you can you just like stand in the water tank too, or like what's yeah, the? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, see, look. Oh, I am okay. the water tank. I am the tank. So it's a flat car with a decoration on top. Yeah, I don't, I don't. It's, it used to have. I mean, I you know, I I would take that over the Tweetsie where you can't like get over the coal pile. Like coal pile, yeah. I prefer this to that, but it's a little strange still. Yeah, I thought it had. Uh... I thought it had collision do, for sure. Do we just have it set to just snow? Like, I feel like we've had just snow as the random weather. I don't like, think so. we had we had thunderstorm once. No I guess, weather but... type random. Okay, I mean that's okay. Oh, interesting. We've got clear skies, partly cloudy, sand dust storm. What is that? I'm gonna set it to sand dust. Oh my god, bro! This is this is sand dust storm, by the way. I know they're very common in Colorado. Uh, yeah, it's an accurate simulation of American Midwest railroading. Yeah. Yep. Well, if we were in Vegas, like. I mean, there's a giant there's a giant sand dune in the middle of Colorado that the railroad ran past, which is kind of cool. But so I'm sure they had those there. But. All right, I'm gonna switch switch it back to random weather here. Uh, random. Can't see the band through the smoke, man. Yeah, the smoke effect still renders, but the good times. It's a, it's a neat vibe. Def maybe maybe desert map? That'd be fun. Get some some dust storms, sandstorms. Immediately take, into take a, me back to middle school. Into a blizzard, though. That's the. Uh, I mean, you know, hot cold. Yeah. It happens. Did you start ringing my bell? Maybe. Because I didn't. Yeah, I pulled it once. You needed that extra attractive effort, bro. It does help. It does help. Yeah. Yeah. Let's people know you're going fast. Yep. It's the ding ding. Okay, so you have a whistle on a steam train. We've never actually talked about this. You have a whistle on a steam train. Why the heck do you need a bell? Uh, it's a different kind of warning. They're they're both just audible warnings. What do you, what do you warn people with the bell? What is That's, that? Uh, the like, standard procedure is you're coming into a station, you're running through a station, it's occupied, station platform, you're coming into a station, stop, uh, going through a grade crossing. Uh, the bell fireman like, rings you the bell. Blow the whistle to stop at a station, like you. you well, you do when you when you stop, but as you're coming into the stop, you know you like ring the bell you on the approach. The bell? Yeah, the bell bells are. Hear the giant steam. Well, so the the thing about giant steam locomotive and like, there's an actual thing about this, and the reason why we have a bell, and this is one of the videos that I've been wanting to do, is that bells are actually an unnatural sounding thing that that really cut through everything else because they don't function like any other thing in nature right i remember that national jo D national geographic documentary on steam trains where they were like look at the steam train in the wild <laughs> here it's chops going <laughs> well so you know? the the thing about it the thing about it though con is that every sound that occurs naturally produced whatever whistles do this too have what's called an overtone series where okay. the the pitch of the sound Say it's 440 hertz, that's an A on yeah. the musical scale, the orchestra's tuned to it, whatever. Every note like that, produced by a whistle, produced by whatever, they have an overtone series, and, it, and it's always a major overtone series in nature. Almost always. I'm sure there's something that someone will prove me wrong in the comments, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. And as you go up the overtone series, you get multiples of that frequency that occur as part of the sound. So you'll get the octave at 880. You'll get the the major or the perfect fifth above that, up to a major third. So that every time you're playing one note, you're actually technically playing a major chord, the happy sounding chord on a guitar or a piano or whatever. And so everything that naturally produces sound, my voice right now, the way you talk, the the like the overtones might be more, they might be less, depending on what it is, and that's what makes in different instruments sound different from each other. But they all have that positive major overtone series. Gotta get this switch. Bells have a minor overtone series. And a minor overtone series, rather than having the major third, has the minor third. 
which yeah, is which, sounds, which is sounds weird to the human ear. It sounds unnatural, completely unnatural. Sounds, so you hear a sad. you hear a bell. It sounds sad, but it it doesn't sound right. It's unsettling, and that's why and that's it makes why a great the four warning chords device. Chords are always major, major, minor, major. Right, right. Every every you've you've seen that like the this is not even like a joke. The, the axis like of most, awesome, yes. Yeah, most songs are written with only like four chords, and it's the same four. Pa I used to play piano and stuff too, and, and orchestra instruments, and actually like. I played tuba and trombone and baritone. I'm learning this about Khan. He's a music person. A was a music person. That's fun. Which means my embouchure is really strong. I have Ooh. strong lips. Look at that. Um, yeah. Yes. To play, to play brass instruments, you need to vibrate your lips. Like, so like I have strong lips as a result. Yeah, exactly. Was that your was that your butthole or was that your lips? I'm. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm I'm gonna vote butthole. That was his butthole. Make it. Making the yeah okay. Well, anyway, um, but with with uh with now I'm thinking of buttholes. I can't. Remember. <laughs> what I was we were yeah. How's, about, how's yeah. your uh, how's your buttholes on, Bashir Khan? Do it. Perfect. Are we are we going Perfect. there? It's going there. Okay. Super, okay. Super reinforced. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. But no, you have to like you have to vibrate your lips to like play brass instruments and stuff. But um, if you play like a song, the, it, you can use pretty much like I think it's like it's minor and then the harmonic major and then because every minor chord has an associated major scale. It's it's one I don't know five how much six four. Yeah, yeah. There you go. But that's, then if you play them, it, so when you play the third minor chord. Um, if you resolve it to a major, that's what gives your your brain that like happy feeling. Ha happy like, here's chemicals. The minor. Yes. Yeah. And here, here's the minor, and then resolves it to a major, and your brain's like, ah, oh, that's satisfying. Whereas if you like stop on the minor, your brain will get that itch where it's like, you right. need to resolve this. Like it, it it's needs a to part be. of Western music tradition that that yeah. whole thing and that that culture and language of harmony and how it's actually set up in music. And, yeah. And there's there are reasons that music theory is a thing and it's very interesting if you really want to get into the nerdy stuff but uh as as captain barbosa says the 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 guy the code be more what you call guidelines than actual rules but yeah. uh you know the, there's definitely a lot of things with it. train whistles just need to be all diminished fourths and then that you'll would be always, there are there's some weird it. ones out there um most train whistles end up playing like a nice pretty chord like minor chord major chord depending on how many chimes they have um, I've found a couple from some of my friends of I that like looking around at whistles and stuff. There's one that's I think off the Virginian Railroad that's a three chime that just plays a power chord like it's rock and roll and it's just like the most bizarre sounding cool whistle ever. <laughs> but they did all sorts of stuff. But the point is the overtone series on the whistle, regardless, is still a major overtone series. Yeah, it makes uh, sense. but the bell is the minor one, and so it provides a different warning, and it and it's a little bit more jarring. Where a whistle in the distance might sound somewhat pleasing, uh, particularly if you're a rail fan type person. So the bell serves a slightly different role as a warning device than the, the whistle does. We just need to have a screaming speaker on the front of every steam locomotive. So they it just, like, <laughs> yells at them like ah. They ah! have. They have looked into all sorts of silly things to try and get people to be aware that a train's coming, believe me. Uh, including oh, I like- I saw a video the other day where someone stopped at a rail crossing, they saw the train coming, they made a full stop, and then they inched forward onto the rail crossing and got hit anyway. It... Even though like, they clearly stopped, they saw the train coming, and they were like, yeah, I'm gonna inch forward anyway, and then like, but only enough so that the front of their car got clipped. And it's like, what were you doing? What, what like, were I... you, yeah. You clearly saw the train and stopped, and then you're like, "Yeah, I'll just go anyway." Like, what the? Life's hard sometimes, Con. Don't you know? It was really, it was really weird. <laughs> yeah, crossing safety, and yeah, that's all. That's a whole thing. I mean, I, I made an 82-minute long video about talking about designing crossings and, and things like that, a couple, like a couple weeks ago. Uh, just because there's so right, much that goes stop, into it, I can, and you can stop it on pin. I'll, I'll grab okay. your cars. I'm trying to here. not flat spot my wheels here. It's fine. Oh, I'm just flat spotting my wheels. Yeah, it's just. That's yeah, okay. Brand new engine, you know. I want to keep the new train smell for a little bit. Oh, the smell of burning. <laughs> isn't that isn't that what Pretty it would much. smell like? like grease, I mean, you're burning a oil, coal fire. It must smell. Grease, like, oil, campfire, smell. coal. Yeah. yeah. It, there's th there is a distinct smell, and you know it is it is like coal smoke is not like a good smell. 
like it's like kind of gross but it, it is so absolutely well, it's, really, it's really like carbon heavy right like it, it, it be... is it's not great it's not good for you to breathe in but my brain has pavloved me to say i like this smell because it means steam choo choo doing things <laughs> ridiculous yeah it's weird steam coming from a steam lung. engine the steam coming from a steam engine because it's treated it smells really good it's got a, a like a nice like sweet smell to it you'll, you'll have to yeah. come by the museum sometime and experience it especially because you, you throw in that bottle of lemon pledge and uh no, really just no mr khan we don't have you no get, lemon you get pledge. the lemon pledge going and then no. it really it really improves the no you why is this train stopping when there's no brake on it what the heck mm. God, I gotta play the mini game no again. Break, there's no break set and no tender break, no nothing, and it's not. It's like something actually, in the dirt. <laughs> Tweesty's actually like that yeah, breaks at zero percent. That's so weird. I don't know, man. I I got to the roundhouse and all the trains are dinging their bells at me. So, oh, well, you know, it happens. <laughs> They're just happy to see you. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. All right, you want to hop on the the cordwood here and? Uh... Oh, I'm parking the 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 Kenosha at the roundhouse right now. Oh, okay. Because we need to line this into the hump. I thought it was... I mean, you just need to line the one switch. We already went through that switch, right? So it should Actually, be Actually, you know what? We don't need to line this into the hump. We've been uh, we've been here far too long. Shift's over. Throw the keys in the dirt. I'm going to just oh, sleep. Oh, okay. I mean, I'll yeah. just leave it on the table then. You back okay. the, yeah, perfect. All right, shift's Later. over. Thanks for watching, shift's everybody. Over. Yeah. Later. See ya. Later. Shift's over. Pool's closed.